So today I'm gonna to cover what to do with a job offer. So I'm going to break down the job offer into two kind of sections. If you're currently a student and you're looking for that first job and you have a job offer, and the second scenario where you currently have a job or maybe you've been employed for a while, but you've been unemployed for maybe a month or two and you're looking for that new job. So we'll cover that in the second scenario. So for students coming out of school, um, the options can be slim sometime. Sometimes you know you have one job offer, maybe two job offers, um, but you're not quite sure what to do. A lot of times you get stuck taking a job just because you know, you're running out of time, uh, graduation's coming, or maybe it's past graduation and your lease is ending. And so in general, like all job offers, you should look at the compensation. Is it enough? Um, if you've been doing you know, what we've talked about and how to get a job series, have you talked to recruiters? Do you know what you should be making? Um, a lot of times school programs will give you kind of the expected salary for graduates or what the average is. Use that as a comparison as well. So compensation of pay is just one part. You also wanna look at benefits such as uh, paid time off, um, health insurance, dental, um, I don't know. Companies have all kinds of crazy benefits nowadays like working from home. Um, they have discount programs for like movies, uh, laptops, all kinds of different products nowadays too. So I'd really look at the entire package and not just the compensation and see if this is going to be a good fit for you. Um, cultural fit is key as well. You wanna make sure you like the people. You could work there at least for, you know, couple of years, especially on a first job, you know, you want to get in kind of at least two years, probably minimum. Um, but again, just looking to make sure it fits. If you only have one offer and this is it, and you're running out of time and you can't pay your bills, I would tell you just take the job. Uh, getting experience is crucial for just getting out of college. Having that experience makes it a lot easier um, to get another job. So I would definitely recommend looking at the cultural fit and the compensation as well as making sure you can kind of grow and get skills. If you're lucky and you get a great offer, a great company, and you have a great opportunity to grow and learn a lot, this is a perfect opportunity. Um, they'll typically throw you an offer, usually like a phone, phone call and tell you that you need to um, accept the offer or not, but typically they'll send you an email. So make sure you have everything in writing, um, look through all the benefits, the packages, like I said, and then typically just follow their system. Um, it could be as simple as sending an email back to HR or the hiring manager saying, you know, thank you for this opportunity. Uh, I'd love to accept this job. Um, what are the next steps in the process? And typically they'll give you kind of the run through of what days to uh, you'll be starting and whatnot. So as for taking the first job, I have seen there's really, really little room in negotiating. So I wouldn't come in and be like, you know, you offered this much money, I'll take it, but I need like an extra, you know, $5,000. Um, even with PTO, I've seen it's just non-existent. So every company I've worked for in general, it's based on uh, company kind of policy. So policy is you've worked here for so many years, you get so many days PTO, and typically in quantitative finance, which most of you should be kind of pursuing a job in quantitative fields, there's already a set kind of rule or what you can and can't have for PTO. And I've seen most companies will not negotiate on this, uh, especially because a lot of uh, risk managers or quantitative finance people will come out actually at the high end or close to the maximum paid time off uh, for the company in general. So those are kind of my tips for accepting that first job. Uh, the real goal here is just getting that job. Once you can get a job that's relevant, or close to it, you know, get a few years in and then it's easier to kind of move around and find a company that you really love and a job that you really want to do. So for those of you who have been interviewing and are about to take a job offer, um, but you already have work experience, this is a little more technical in the fact that when you come out as a student, you typically just take the first job you get, or you look through a few of them and try to get the best offer you can. However, in this situation, you've probably have been working with a recruiter and you know you kind of have down the salary range. Typically, there's a little bit of room to negotiate here with your recruiter, you know, going back and forth between well, the company's offering, you know, X amount of dollars. You come back and say, well, I can't really work for that 
you know, I'm already currently making that, or maybe you're moving to a new city and you need a little bit more. Um, having experience makes the negotiating a little better and a little easier. So again, I would say just like in students, the PTO, the health benefits, usually all of that is pretty non-negotiable. So I would really focus on the salary here. And if you've been working with a recruiter, this makes it a lot easier. Um, working with a company as well, it you can still negotiate, but I find it's a little more challenging to negotiate salary up, especially in risk management and quantitative finance. There's usually a range that company is willing to pay. However, if you do have a lot of experience, um, you can kind of negotiate your way up. And again, just like the student, I'd go through the typical formal process. Make sure you have the offer in writing. Make sure you have the benefits in writing. Um, run through and make sure that everything's good. So just because your compensation looks great, you know, the health insurance might be terrible. Uh, I've actually taken a job where the compensation looked amazing and a lot of the other benefits were non-existent. And so you kind of have to weigh the trade-offs. If you're willing to make a lot of money, does that compensate you for, you know, lack of health insurance, a little to no PTO, um, different other options that you had at another company. So I would make sure you read all the documents carefully. And then once you have decided whether to accept it or not, you know, make sure to send an email response of, hey, I really appreciate the offer. I think this would be a great fit for me. I'm excited to start. You know, what are the next steps in the process? Also, if you get the offer and it's terrible and you already have a job and you're not really looking to jump quickly, you can just write a nice thank you email saying, hey, you know, I really appreciate it. However, the salary, you know, is a little bit too low and I just don't think this will be a good fit for me overall and just end it at that. So that's kind of my suggestion and tips for accepting the job offer. Um, from working in quantitative finance, which is what these videos are made for, um, there's usually not a lot of negotiating room, especially when you have less than five or 10 years experience in quantitative finance. So that's kind of my, my wrap up. Thanks for watching my videos. Thanks for watching my video. If you find it helpful, please like, share, and subscribe.